Um, the first one is actually an article that is called uh, Middle East uh, Conflict uh, Hampers uh, Rescue of Dead Sea. And the Dead Sea is an area that's located uh, here uh, near Israel, between Israel and um, Jordan, and uh, abuts on the Palestinian territories as well as Saudi Arabia. And what's happened with the, the Dead Sea is it is actually the lowest point on earth. I didn't know that, but professors learn stuff too. And um, the water has been going down, the water level in it, uh, because, I mean, dramatically going down because uh, people have been damming up sources of water for the Dead Sea and also because um, they've been using water from it and diverting it to other places. I don't know why, because the Dead Sea is extremely salty i mean it's it's uh, basically briny water you could throw pickles or herrings in there and you have some nice pickled herrings um and it has a, a very unique history and uh is an interesting uh ecosystem but the problem is that um trying to get these countries in the middle of a very unstable area with a lot of conflict and war and border tensions going on has been really difficult so scientists and others are are fairly desperate to try and, and get the Black Sea, uh, I'm sorry, the Dead Sea back uh, um, so that the water levels can rise and it can continue to uh, basically be an interesting place. The other article that I am very uh, sort of close to in terms of my own interest is this article about uh, divers beginning to remove uh, artificial reef uh, made up of tires. Um, and this is from Fort Lauderdale, of course. I am affiliated with Nova University Oceanographic Center in Fort Lauderdale uh, and it's it's right there at the mouth you can look out and see where the reef is um, it says what took only days to create um, and what was touted as the world's largest artificial reef in 1972 um, has turned out to be a reef killer because what happened was in 1972 um, a well-intentioned effort uh, to make an artificial reef out of tires. They, they actually put about a million tires uh, in there and tied them together and the cables broke and the storm surge and hurricanes and tides and other things have just knocked those tires all over the place. And those tires are now uh, basically uh, coral reef killing machines is what, what, what uh, William uh, Knuckles, who is coordinating the project to uh, have military crews uh, dive down 70 feet, retrieve all these tires, uh, retrieve 700,000 of these tires. The rest of them, I guess, have disappeared. Um, great idea, the Broward uh, County Artificial Reef Group, uh, Army Corps of Engineers, and Goodyear Tires back in 1972 decided that they would put out this project to try and create an artificial reef so that uh, marine life could be attracted to it and it would become a, a living, breathing reef. It turned out that they were pretty wrong. Uh, things didn't really want to attach to tires very much, uh, and those tires have washed up on beaches and, and floated all over and smashed into the reef, and so now it's a mess. This is an example, I think, of something that we have studied and are looking at, which is the uh, when you don't have really good science and when you don't uh, have sufficient uh, sort of feasibility studies done and know what you're doing, you may go out and do something that you think is good uh, in terms of coastal policy, any kind of coastal policy, uh, whether you build groins or build uh, seawalls or build offshore, you know, artificial structures of some sort uh, to try and prevent waves from uh, breaking all the way to shore during hurricanes, for example. A lot of those things have not been well studied. Fortunately, nowadays, um, the science is better. Some of your colleagues and my colleagues are actually studying this, and so we're going to do better in the future. Thanks a lot. See you in class. Science basically doesn't get it right when well-meaning individuals don't listen to scientists, bring them in, consider all the options, and go ahead and launch what amount to ill-conceived projects. The 1970s, early 70s were a period when, as you know, 
we really didn't know very much about um, wave action, about much of the life of beaches, and, and the science was really very weak. It, it's much better this year, next year it'll be even better, thanks to scientists and people like my friends and colleagues at the NOVA Oceanographic Center in, in Dania Beach in Fort Lauderdale.